argument in Lehman right now about what dangers potentially might exist in, in very public short selling uh, advocacy against that firm. Um, arguably, that same could be said for, for the bond insurers. You, you, you view it as a, as a warning sign as opposed to a, a, a takedown. Can, can you maybe, and you talked a little bit about it publicly, but maybe state uh, a little more broadly your views on the necessity of, of disclosure or, or advocacy on the short side of uh, given stocks. Uh, sure. Look, I think uh, free speech is a fairly, it's about the most important uh, principle of our country. It's kind of number one. Number two, um, the markets are well served by people who have money at risk, who do high quality work. Frankly, sharing that information as widely as possible. That's, that's what creates efficient markets. You know, David Einhorn, uh, I think in November, gave a speech in which he talked about his concerns about Lehman. And Lehman stock at the time was in the 60s. And had people listened to David when the stock was in the 60s, or had Lehman listened to David and said, you know what, this is not a bad time for us to raise some equity at this price and position ourselves better for, for perhaps some losses in the portfolio, that would have been good for Lehman. Uh, it wouldn't have been so good for David as a short seller, frankly. Right. Um, but it would have protected some investors from, from what's happened to those who, investors who have owned, owned stock in the company. If, you know, if you're long and you own a stock, you can go into barrens, you can get on a rooftop, you can t pump how great your company is, and no one for a second looks at you askance. But if the same person gets on CNBC, not the same person, or even you know, David Einhorn can, is mostly a long as opposed to a short. He gets right. on CNBC and he talks about why he thinks NBC home building company is a great company. No one thinks twice. But if he gets on and he says, you know, look, I have some concerns about Lehman's balance sheet. I have some concerns about how they're marking their assets. Um, this is something where the, the New York Times writes a scathing article about David Einhorn doing this. And, and I would think the media of all places, the media, which is the, the force for, you know, digging up the dirt about what's going on in Washington, should be very interested. And, and short should be the best source for the media. And frankly, they should be, if, if I were, I would have given a slightly different answer than Bob Steele if I were Treasury Secretary. I would say instead of meeting with Jim Chanos twice a year, I would meet with Jim Chanos once a month. Uh, or at least I would have an open door to the short selling community. If you have concerns about companies, the economy, balance sheets, et cetera, and we want to hear about them. And if it's, right. even if it's just simply, you know what, here's an email box where you can send your submission, we'll take it seriously, to, you know what, the ones that are serious. But is there not a, subs a substantive danger and a substantive distinction between advocating on the up and, and advocating on the short side? Take Lehman Brothers, right? You can quibble, well, not quibble, but that might be the right. You can argue with um, the way they presented the information about their assets, the way they're marking them, and so on. But you also run the risk of putting that company into serious financial crisis, which which has all sorts of effects that, that you just don't know what's going to end. I mean, Bear Stearns is a perfect example. So isn't there a, a substantive distinction that, that is just more dangerous to the economy at large? Well, let me distinguish between different types of short selling and, and disclosure. I think if someone spreads rumors that are false, right. that person should be prosecuted. In order to make an investment gain, that person should be prosecuted. Right. Uh, if a person goes on CNBC and says, based on my analysis of the 10Q on page 12, you know, they said that we've got six and a half billion of CDOs, and before they said this was mortgage-backed securities, well, that's a substantive difference. I think that's, that's totally acceptable. If, uh, no legitimate business, in my view, will go out of business because someone spreads a, a false rumor about it. I think that uh, you know, if Lehman is so vulnerable to the, the criticisms of a short seller, I think it has to think about whether it's, it's capitalized correctly. You know, can you, is there a room in the world for a 40 to 1 levered institution which is so confidence sensitive that a 38 year old short seller can get on CNBC and raise a few concerns and it goes out of business? It's a dangerous game to play though, especially, especially, oh. in the, especially when it comes to financially centered stocks where confidence is the coin of the realm. Here's what I would say. What I would say is why do we have bubbles? Why do we have financial institutions that, with 40 to 1 levered balance sheets? We have them because the people who, uh, you know, because because you couldn't short single-family home prices rising, okay? Right. That's why there was a bubble in single-family home prices. Mm -hmm. and, and interestingly, only when there was a mechanism to go short housing, basically ABX, these, right. the ABX index, did the bubble finally burst. And so, if, if the whole country is only long on margin, we're going to have bubbles after bubbles, okay? Um, and Systemic risk is created when we have institutions with, and I, I'm not, I don't mean to pick on Lehman, and I'm not, I'm not short Lehman, and I'm not long Lehman, but uh, we want businesses that can withstand the critique 
of, of any investor. Right. Uh, that's, that's, you know, whether it's a bank or otherwise. So by the Ackman plan, what, what are the other means of injecting sh the short seller ethos or vibe into the markets? Are there, are there ways we can institutionalize it to create a uh, corrective uh, force on well, look, look at what happened to me. You know, I wrote a 66-page white paper. It was reviewed by some of the best law firms in the city. Uh, I released it in the most public way I possibly could. I disclosed my position. It's very important to disclose your position. You can't claim to be independent and right. put out a piece of paper that's where, where you're not. Um, and then I had to go withstand a six-month investigation by Elliot Spitzer and a several-month investigation by the SEC. David Einhorn criticized Allied Capital publicly in 2002. And in turn, he was investigated by the SEC. Um, you know, it, it's okay. You know, I've got a thick skin, but right. uh, if if this is the regulatory response to someone criticizing a public company, particularly an influential one, I mean, M MBIA, largest guarantor of New York State and city bonds, it was a very easy call for them to the treasurer, the, and the call from the treasurer to Spitzer's office. What you want is. What you should be thinking about as an investor is what are the incentives of the person giving me the information. And the incentives of a management team of a public company are in some sense stronger to promote their stock than the incentives of a short seller. You know, the, the short seller is short and management is long. The short seller has a choice in which companies he shorts. Management doesn't have a choice in which company they're long. Right. And I think that, if anything, you would look for bias on the part of management as opposed to short sellers.